interesting just in terms of cementing down what cinch and kosh look like. In the same way that we have uh, talked about sine and cosine, it might be nice to graph cinch and kosh. And again, notice in terms of curve plotting, how do we plot y equals f of x? The general procedure was what? Always take the first and second derivatives so that you can see what the slope is, what the concavity is, etc. The derivative of cosh is cinch. Derivative of cinch is cosh. By the way, again, if these terms seem alien to you, you can always rewrite them in terms of the basic definition, in terms of e to the x and e to the minus x, and carry out the differentiation in a straightforward way. Well, here's the interesting point. Let's plot y equals cosh x. Notice, first of all, that cosh x is an even function. If I replace x by minus x, all I get is what? e to the minus x plus e to the x over 2, which is the same thing as I have over here. It's going to be a symmetric function with curve with respect to the y-axis. But again, what do I do? I compute the derivative. I can find out where the derivative is 0. It's 0 when e to the x equals e to the minus x. That happens only when x is 0. When x is 0, this is e to the 0 plus e to the 0. That's 1 plus 1, which is 2, over 2, which is 1. So in other words, the derivative is 0 when x is 0 and y is 1. The second derivative is cosh. We've already seen that this can never be negative. So the second derivative is always positive. That means that the curve is always holding water. Putting all of this together, the curve y equals cosh x looks something like this. It's a dangerous thing to say. It sort of resembles a parabola. It's nothing like a parabola, except if we, what I mean is, it has this type of shape. Notice it does not oscillate. It, it is not an oscillating function like the cosine. It doesn't act periodically. This thing just keeps going like this. All right? On the other hand, how can we plot y equals sinh x? Well, I guess we can come right back to here and work from here. The derivative of sinh is cosh. The cosh is always at least as big as 1, we found out. Therefore, the slope of sinh x is always at least as big as 1. And it's equal to 1 when x is 0. Uh, putting all these details together, what we find is what? First of all, the sinh is an odd function, meaning if we replace x by minus x, we change the sign. See, this is e to the minus x minus e to the x, which is the negative of what we have over here. But those, again, are details which are easy for you to fill in. The graph y equals sinh x looks something like this. In other words, it's a very steep curve. It's spilling water and rising here, holding water and rising here. The curve is always rising. Again, another interesting thing to observe here is that notice that when x is very, very large, e to the minus x becomes negligible. And if e to the minus x is negligible, notice that both cinch and cosh behave like 1 half e to the x. In other words, this term tends to drop out. And just to show you the contrast here, I've sketched in the curve y equals 1 half e to the x to show you how it splits the difference for large values of x between these two in a way. And that as x gets larger, both of these curves converge on y equals 1 half e to the x. Again, I simply want to mention enough here so that you get the idea of how we can apply the same old calculus to our new function.